Hi, and welcome back to Allen High School Pre-AP Chemistry. We're working on chemistry calculations and numbers and about to move into significant figures. In order to do this well, we want to make sure you know how to use your calculators effectively. We are going to do this part together in class. That's kind of a hands-on activity that I want to walk around and make sure you're all doing a great job with those. So I want you to move in your notes to the section called significant figures. Now significant figures are a very valuable concept, especially in a laboratory environment. The real goal of significant figures is to ensure that when we report numbers as scientists, we're kind of talking as scientists, not as students, when we report numbers, that our numbers accurately reflect the quality of our measuring device. So that's the real goal of these. Now, when we do significant figures, therefore, we're talking about measurements because we're talking about the quality of our measuring devices. Okay, you don't want to mislead people. So we, when we talk about measurements, then we are not going to be using what we call counts or exact numbers. All right, that, that they're valuable. I'm not saying they don't have value. I'm just saying we don't use the word significance when we discuss those. Now, true numbers, well, any non-zero number, not true numbers, but any non-zero number is always significant, assuming we don't, we're not talking about a count. So non-zero measurements are significant. Now for a count, let's take a look at these little mole guys. You'll understand why I talk about the mole soon. There's one, two, three, four of these little mole guys. I could say that there are four moles guys on there, and I'm not going to be misleading you. I could say that there are not five, but 4.0 of these little mole guys, and I'm not misleading you. I could add however many zeros I want, and I'm not misleading you. Now, in terms of a measurement, the number of digits that we have could be misleading. And it is truly these zeros that are tough because zeros play two roles numerically. One is that of magnitude and the other is that of measurement. Now, again, the magnitude zeros are valuable. It's important to know, uh, you know, the difference between 10 and 1,000, that's valuable information, but we don't call them significant in terms of the measurement. So it's the measurement zeros that are a little bit tricky. So let's take a look at our next page. This is a nice little tool for figuring out whether our zeros are significant or not in terms of our measurement. Now, it does require you to know that the Pacific Ocean is to the left or west and that the Atlantic Ocean is to the right or east. And the technique is identical for these. The key difference is that if you have a present decimal, and I'm talking about a decimal point explicit, so that decimal point has to be clearly shown in this case. Explicit decimal place. Um, then we're going to start from the Pacific side of the ocean. Now, if that decimal point is absent, not explicitly shown in the problem, we're going to start from the Atlantic or the right-hand side. Now, in both cases, we are going to start counting with the first non-zero, both of them, that, that rule's the same. And then the second guideline is that once you start counting, everything counts until the end of the number, kind of until you fall off the ocean, so to speak. So let's take a look at some examples and we'll see what I'm talking about here. So if I put up here the number 4098, 
zero. I am not explicitly putting in that decimal place. So let's see how I would count my significant figures for this. No decimal, absent decimal. I'm going to start on the Atlantic side. I don't start counting till my first non-zero. And I count one, two, three, four significant figures. That would mean that my measuring device had three certain values I could measure and one uncertain or estimated. Remember, we did that in the previous unit. That tells me that this zero is giving me magnitude, not measurement. Let's take a look at what we would do as scientists if I put a zero at the end. As a scientist, I'm going to interpret that as an explicit decimal. I'm going to start from the Pacific. You start counting at your first non-zero. One, two, three, four, five. That zero is now communicated as being part of the measurement, not magnitude. So this time I have five significant figures, which would mean I have four certain and one uncertain or estimated digit. All right, so that's the key difference with decimal places. Let me do one more example for you. If I had 0 0.0040098, Notice that I put a zero in front of the decimal place. That's to make it clear that that's truly a decimal place and not a stray mark. Again, I have a present decimal. I'm going to start from the Pacific side. I start at my first non-zero. That's the four. And once I start counting, every digit counts. So this number two also has five significant figures, okay? Because these three zeros are telling me magnitude. That zero's in the middle. All zero in the middle is going to be a measurement. But both of these zeros are telling me measurement. Now, what's really nice about scientific notation that you've already learned about is that the number in front of your scientific notation, that coefficient, everything is significant. So I could write that first number as 4.098 times 10 to the fourth. The number in front is the measurement, and now I don't need zeros to tell me magnitude because I'm using my exponent for that. So this is my magnitude number. So I, I like scientific notation for that purpose. It gives my scientific, uh, my significant figures very clearly. So the second number would be 4.0980 times 10 to the fourth. Again, giving me those five significant figures very clearly. And then that last example that I did would be 4.0980, again, five sig figs, but this way, this time, times 10 to the minus third. All right, what I'd like you to do is you have an example in your notes. And remember, we're talking about embracing your learning. So I want you to try example 2.6 in your notes before you watch the next video to see how well you're grasping this and, and determine what you need help with during our mentoring time in class.